I too would like to wish everybody happy Mother's Day, the mothers that are in here. And uh, again, I'd like to repeat, you know, we did it before service and it wasn't on camera, is that, you know, parents usually, this is something that I have found, is they want to live through their children. And something too that I have, at least used to be, I don't know how much it is now, but you always want to be like your parents. And, you know, that's been put in people and unfortunately it gets perverted. Um, and we end up, instead of desiring, um, <clears throat> you know, the spiritual aspect of our children or the children wanting, you know, wanting to live through our kids, we live carnally through them. We like the, the outward things that they do, the, the games, the sports, you know, the dad wants the, to relive his, his youth through his son's football, you know, career or team or whatever it is, you know, or uh, yeah, hunting or, or um, you know, singing, you know, if my mom was a singer, well, you know, I want my child to be one so I can keep that thing going, you know what I mean? And that's really just a perversion of what God wants to do. He wants to live through, it could be for the happy Father's Day or Mother's Day because he wants to live through us. And it's for our good, though, not because he has any selfish ambitions or wants to try to relive something that he's lived in the past. He wants to live through us to give us life. And so, uh, you know, that's my Mother's Day message. <laughs> uh, I want to be uh, speaking today. Um, I want to read in Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> it's kind of a... I want to talk about uh, being secret, but there's some other things I want to throw in there as well because, I don't know, several, either a week ago or several weeks ago in Wednesday night, sometime, I don't remember when it was, I talked about vows, you know, people who make vows. And, and uh, you know, I have nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with making a vow. It's when you make a vow and you don't pay it. See, and that, that, it's because it opens the door to the enemy. And we've had lots of people, not only in here, but also people that have visited here. And we've visited other churches, and we hear people make vows all the time. I've had people make vows. Oh, God's called me to this church, and you'll see them three times, and then they're gone. One time, and they're gone. You'll have people make vows uh, to other ministries. You know, we went and heard one guy stand up and say, hey, God's called me in covenant to be with you. You know, and it made that in front of the whole church, and, and uh, you never saw him again. <laughs> and and if people do that in America all the time. We make vows, and we don't pay them. And it opens the door to the enemy. And when you find out all the qualifications to get in this system, you know, it's no wonder the body of Christ is the way it is. You know, we, we, we kind of, we don't major on the qualifications to get in this system. We preach the benefits of this system and then wonder why we can't get in. It's because we're not getting the qualifiers. You know what I mean? In other words, if it, we're going to read some qualifiers here, you know, and this is a common one, is if you don't forgive others, what? That, that's a qualifier to get in the system, isn't it? But that's not preached a lot. I have heard it preached, but it's not preached as much as the um, benefits of the system are preached. You know what I mean? And when you're calling people up forward to get prayed for, you know, for healing or for whatever, for financial breakthrough or whatever it is, there's a lot of qualifications here that can stop that. And, you know, the Bible says a curse without a cause will not alight. And we've got a lot of curses on us because of things we're either doing or not doing. Vows are one of them. You know, you know making a vow and not paying it, a curse can light. And you better, you better be ready for that. And that's one of the reasons you'll very seldom... Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Marriage. marriage. You know, what, what's the marriage ceremony? What are you saying up there? Sickness and health. Sickness Till death do us part. For better or for worse. worse. We like the better part. Huh? Rich or poor. Rich or poor. <laughs> See, those are vows. They mean nothing to anybody anymore. You know, I mean, we just, we, yeah, the, uh, huh? yeah, and it brings destruction in people's lives. And we don't realize that there's a spiritual realm out there that is hanging on your words on both sides, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of the devil. They're hanging on both sides, and the words that we speak uh, can bring life or death. And we don't realize, then we go forward and we wonder why people don't get healed. We wonder why things aren't working like, they're, like they should. I know why, because we're not meeting the qualifications. 
And it's very difficult to meet the qualifications because <laughs> because we've been trained in yeah, comfortous practices. <laughs> Let me put it that way. We've been trained that vows mean nothing. We've been trained that saying, giving your word or anything uh, doesn't mean anything. Uh, even when we went down to uh, San Antonio and they had in their brochure, that was a vow. We'll come to your church. You invite us, we'll come to your church. They didn't, it meant nothing. They didn't come. You know, and people make vows all the time. And we hear it, you know, Kathy and I, we're, I know she is too. We're very cognizant of what's being spoken around us a lot. And we've heard, you know, in different churches and sometimes even in ours, you know, people making vows. Well, I'm never going to miss another service. I'm going to be here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be here till you're here. I mean, we've had people say, we're going to be here for your whole life. To us. Wherever you go, we're following. <laughs> that's, that's a heavy vow. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with vows. Nothing wrong with them at all, as long as you pay them. Because what does the scripture say, you know, my favorite psalm in Psalm 15? What's it say? Who can dwell with the burning? Those who swear to their own hurt. So you can dwell with the burning if you make the vow and you stay and you pay the vow. You can dwell with the burning light. But the scripture says it's better not to vow than to vow and not pay it. I want to read this. I've read this in Ecclesiastes before. I don't know, Brenda, you said you've been going through the book. I don't know if you've gotten to this one yet or not. Well, that's after Proverbs, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just going to have to. Have you gotten to chapter 5 yet? Ecclesiastes, chapter 5. Okay. Verse, verse 4. When you make a vow to God, do not delay to fulfill it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. It is better not to vow, or to make, it is better not to make a vow than to make one and not fulfill it. So he, now notice what he's not saying. He's not saying it's, it's, it's better... Um, uh, to uh, make a vow and pay it. He says it's better not to make a vow and then not pay it, or, or make a vow and not pay it. So you can make a vow as long as you pay it. And he, God doesn't have a problem with that. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. I mean, Americans are just mouthy. I mean, we are. I mean, they're just, and church people are really mouthy. And, you know, I think the scripture, I think it's in James, isn't it, where it says, you know, if a man can control his tongue, he's a perfect man. Yeah. Isn't that a simple thing? <laughs> I mean, when you read it, well, if this is all I have to do, it's not like there's this big, long list of things we have to do, but if we can control our tongue, why? Because our tongue reveals what's in our hearts. It reveals what's inside of us. <clears throat> and there's lots of stuff on words, um, on speaking in Scripture. It talks about, you know, Jesus said that for every idle word men may speak, you know, they'll give an account of it on the day of, of judgment, you know. So it, our words, you know, are out of the abundance of the heart, what? The mouth, what? Jesus. Speaks. So see, that's what's inside of us. And uh, if we could, if you just do that one, it's just one thing. <laughs> but it's so difficult, isn't it? Because our tongue wants to let loose what's in our heart. And so it's better to keep your mouth shut if you don't know what you're gonna if you don't know what you're gonna say, or if to make a vow, it's better not to say it. And Jesus did make this one statement. He said, You've heard it, you know, it's to swear by heaven or swear by the altar or swear by he says, I tell you not to swear at all. He says, just let your yes be yes and your no no. Anything more, he said, is from the evil one. And so one of the things that I do is, is that if, if uh, you know, just let me give you some examples. All right? Let's say God is pressing on you to teach once a month here. Go ahead. Just don't tell me or tell anybody God's told me to teach once a month. Just teach once a month. Do you know what I mean by that? 
That means that every Wednesday at the end of the month, let's say it's on the Wednesday at the end of the month, you, before, before the Wednesday, obviously, uh, we, yeah, you come to us and say, I've got something I want to share on Wednesday night. Then a month later, you do the same thing. And then a month later, you do the same thing. That way, not only are you fulfilling what God has told you, but the devil has no way to get a hold of your words, of your vow that you made, and press you to change your mind. Because the minute you make a vow, what's he going to do? <laughs> He's going to try to stop it. He's going to come. You're going to have every excuse in the world not to do it. But if you just let your yes be yes and your no, no, your no, no, <laughs> vows are no, no's. <laughs> if you just let your yes be yes and your no, no, then he can't grab onto those words and try to press you, and you didn't make a vow. So guess what? You're always in a position that if that Wednesday comes and you don't have anything, you don't have to teach. If God has pressed you to do it every Wednesday, yeah, sure, you're going to want to, and you're going to seek Him, and you're going to want to find it, but the devil can't grab onto the words that you said you were going to do. It'll just be between you and God. The devil won't have a part of it. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. Gosh, so what is that? Eight words, nine words, ten words? Boy, if we could just obey that. And do not protest to the temple messenger. I'm your messenger this morning. I'm your temple messenger, so don't protest to me. My vow was a mistake. <laughs> I changed my mind. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Of course, we know who the destroyer is. You know, they, they thought it was actually God destroying your work, but it's the devil that gets a hold of your work, and he destroys the work of your hands. See, this is a qualifier here, folks, for answered prayer. This is a qualifier to get God, the, the blessings, the goodness of God to operate in your life. And one of the things that I've always done in church, you know, for the things of the kingdom of God, is I just do. I'm, I don't tell people I'm going to do things. I just do them. You know, I work for a boss um, here, in, uh, here in Taylor County, and we work on a farm. And there's, there's things he has no idea that I do. I just go do them. I'm not going to tell him I'm going to do them. I just go do them. Because the minute I tell him I'm going to do it, now I'm under obligation. If I do it on my own, now I'm doing it by free will and with joy. It doesn't become legalistic for me now to do it. And so I do things. I'll go cut trees. I'll go, um, you know, I, I, just all kinds of things. But I don't tell him. I don't sound my horn and say, I make a vow I'm going to do this. Because that way, it leaves me an out. I can say, I, don't, I can do it, or I really don't have to do it. <clears throat> Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. What? Talk is cheap. Like yeah, talk is cheap. And people promise to do things, I don't know, here at the church. They promise to do things, uh, you know, in other churches. They promise to come. They promise to say this. They promise to do this. They say that God's told them to do this. What? Yeah, tithe. Yeah, the promise. Oh, yeah, no, this is never going to happen. And then it happens. Just do it. <laughs> Let your yes be yes and your no, no. And when it says, therefore, fear God. And many people are going to, like I say, there are many qualifiers in Scripture to get the goodness of who God is. It's a system. And there are qualifiers to get in the system. And if we violate the qualifiers, you don't get in the system. Right. It's not God choosing and deciding, well, you've... You've done enough qualifications to do this. No, the system is designed that way. It's, you know, the, the law of gravity is a qualifier. You know what I mean? The law of gravity doesn't pick and choose on people. 
That's a physical law. These are spiritual laws. But the physical laws came from the spiritual laws, right? So gravity is not a respecter of persons. It's a system, right? And it doesn't matter what day you jump off this building. I've said this before. It doesn't make any difference what day of the week, male, female, child, old, whatever it is. You violate that law. There's going to be a sudden stop somewhere, and there's going to be damage done. Probably. And you fall high enough, fall from a great, great enough height, and you'll be done. So it's not God picking and choosing. He's laid out what the qualifiers are. That's what this whole Bible is for. That's why we read our Bible is to find out what the qualifiers are. And as we begin to meet the qualifiers, which, by the way, can only be met by how? Can I meet them myself? Absolutely not. I need the grace of God, don't I? And that's the goodness of God is he's given us the grace to meet the qualifiers. And then blesses us because we do. Yeah. Neato. Okay, now turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. <clears throat> Jeez. Uh, I'm in five. We've got to go to six. Okay, I'm just going to read through till. Um, I think verse 18, yeah, 1 through 18. And I'm just going to share on that this today. It says, the very first scripture, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Now, I always have to ask, and look, like I said, I've got no problem with people who vow and really mean the vow and will pay it. You know, that, that's great. That's fine. I would just do it because I don't like to give the enemy, he's got enough inroads into our lives without my words giving him more inroad, you know what I mean? Or giving me more temptation. It says, do not let your righteousness, what? Be seen or practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Yeah, or to be admired by them. Yeah, her says charitable deeds. And... <clears throat> It says, if you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty blunt, black and white, isn't it? So all the things that we do, and, and look, as I read these things, because we're going to read several things that God says or Jesus says to keep secret. And I don't want you to misunderstand. Uh, one of them is prayer. It says, uh, when we read it, it says the, the, the Pharisees love to stand on the street corners and, and pray out loud, you know, so that men will admire them. We've got to understand something. Most of the prayers that we pray in here would not be admired on the street corner. Well, they wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't, be, yeah, they wouldn't be admired in most of the church. So when I read this, don't think that I'm saying, okay, well, we can't pray out loud anymore because we have to, we're praying in public. So that, that's not what Jesus is meaning. He's saying, you know, we're of course, we're talking about motivation, but each person has to check their own heart for their motivation. You know, I know every one of us, most, probably most every one of us in here have said things or done things so that people would see our righteousness, so that people will think we're spiritual. Because we want to be part of a group. We want people to think God is working in our lives the same way it is on somebody else's. Somebody gives a God-given testimony. They're not looking for admiration. They're not looking for, for the approval of man or anything. And then somebody's going to pipe up and tell what God's done in their life. But you, always catch, you can always almost discern that thing that's saying, I want people to know that God's working in my life. In heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. Listen to this in full. In other words, that's all they're going to get. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand. Know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees which, what is done in secret 
will reward you. So what is he telling us here? He says we've got a choice. We can either be rewarded by man or rewarded by God. The two don't mix. They don't mix. You're going to have one or the other, not a mixture, not 50% one, 50% the other, 70 30 It's one or the other. And if you do it for men, you're done. That's all you get. And notice what it says. It says, when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets. You know, what? Why? Kathy, I, I'm, I meant to bring another version. What was that version that you had that you were reading out of last, yesterday? The message. Does anybody have a message Bible here? Okay. Yeah, she, she can do it on her phone. Thank you. Um, Kathy read it out of the message Bible. It was just, <laughs> it's really funny. But anyway, I'll just have you read parts as we go along, okay? If, if you can, can you pull it up and leave it up, or will it, will it eat your battery up, or? Okay. Um, anyway, you see, we give, you see, there are many things, many things we have done for the community in this church, for people in the community. But we don't toot the horn. I am now, but not, I won't give the details. But see, we've done it in secret. And notice what it says. It says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. See, in the Greek culture, the left hand was evil. In Greek culture, the right hand represented righteousness. The left hand represented evil or unrighteousness. And so we don't let the evil or the unrighteous know what we're doing. And I'll let you determine who you think the unrighteous or the evil are. We don't let them know what they're doing. And so they criticize us and they say, well, you guys don't do anything for the community. But you've got to understand something is, as I minister just to you, let's just forget the, the community. Let's just look at us for a, minute, for a second. Is The reason they think we do nothing for the community is because to them, the kingdom of God is a secret. See, they don't realize changed lives help the community because that's not happening in their churches. It's secret. It's hidden. They can find it out. I'm not saying we're special. I'm not saying we're better. I'm not saying we're special. Anybody can find this out. I think somebody said one time, you know, well, they said about me, they said, uh, well, how can, how can you know? Well, how can he know whether God kills or not? Because I spend time with God. You could know the same thing. Yes, yes, yes. You could know exactly the same thing. Yes, yes. Anybody that's watching by video can know who God is. That's why he gave this. Yes. He's done everything he possibly could do to let us know who he is. But it's hidden from those who don't care to know. Come on. It's a secret. So when we change people's lives here... They look at you and think you've always been the way that you are. You know, you've given testimony and you've given and you've given and all of us have given testimonies of where we've come from and what used to drive us and run us. But when they see you, since the kingdom of God does not come by observation, they look at you and think you've always just been this way. You've always just been this way. You've always been, just been this way. They don't realize what you've been set free from. You don't realize the past that used to drive your life and has now set you free. They can't see that. It's not even in their thought processes. They're not thinking about your past. They're not looking at you wondering, you know, what have they been through? You know, I used to have people come through the store, and I used to think, as I, because of, only because of the kingdom of God. I never thought about it before, just like they don't. But once you get into the kingdom of God, you wonder, you look at people and you wonder, why are they so bitter? Why are they in such pain? Why are they hurting so much? What has caused that in their life? Most people never, they don't even think of that. They're sorry when they see them in pain and they, and they might, but it, it, I'll think about it a long time. You know, and you wonder what in their past has caused, you know, their loss of hope, their loss of, of uh, either capital H or small H, <laughs> their loss of any kind of hope, you know, their, uh, de their depression, their oppression, you know, you, you look at them and you wonder what's, what has caused that. And your heart hurts for them, doesn't it? It breaks for them because that's the mystery of the kingdom of God. Most people, it, it doesn't even, it, they're not even aware. They just think that's life. 
because it's a mystery to them. Because the kingdom of God is a mystery. It has to be unveiled by God himself. And if you spend the time trying to learn, if you spend the time asking, if you spend more time asking God about who he is and what his nature and character is, you know, God will reveal that to you. He'll let you know who he is. And you'll learn his nature and character. You'll learn what, what, uh, uh, the things that he desires and the things, that, the, the things that he loves and the things that he despises or thinks lightly of. You'll learn all of that. And it's for anybody. Education means nothing. It's, and age means nothing. Allie can find it out. It's just If she desired it and she hungered and thirsted for it, she'd be up here teaching. She'd be up here revealing things from the kingdom of God because God reveals it to anybody. doesn't matter how old you are. He reveals it to anybody. It's just how valuable do you see it and how hungry are you for it. You know, Jesus, as we read this, remember, Jesus never went around telling anybody, I'm the Son of God. You know who I am? I'm the Son of God. He kept that a secret. It had to be revealed to people. He said at one time to the woman, I think it was the Sumerian woman, I think he said at one time who he was. And other than that, he, you know, remember the Pharisees kept saying, tell us plainly who you are. And he says, I've already told you. By his actions. I told you who I am. He didn't, he, he, they wanted it, see, they wanted words. Why do you think they were fighting so hard to get him to make a vow? Yeah. Why do you think they were fighting so hard for, for people, why do you think people were fighting so hard for him to tell them who he was? Gee, I wonder. Oh, no, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know me, I love it when people say stuff. <laughs> Most time. <laughs> okay, so when you just said about the Samaritan woman, mm -hmm. that totally crashes down that idea of people are too far gone, mm -hmm. their lives are too messed up. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, he didn't, like his life showed to the Pharisees and it showed to all these other people. But see, God knows exactly what each one of us need. Mm -hmm. And he, she, he told the woman because she needed to hear that. Yeah. And so the, it's like there is big hope, the big H hope, that it doesn't matter how far gone somebody is, how twisted, Absolutely. how messed up their mind mm -hmm. is, he will reveal himself he will reveal to himself. a hungry heart. That's right. He'll reveal himself. That's absolutely 100% correct. As I said last week, the people who use that as an excuse just want to stay in their comfort zone. Because, and admittedly, I have to, do have to admit this. Religion has made it, has hidden who God really is. And so many people feel that way because of what they've been taught incorrectly about God. But God can set anybody free, just like you said. He'll reveal whatever you need to be revealed. That's, he'll reveal it to you. Because that's God. That's his goodness. That's how great he is, is he'll reveal it. But he, hate, but he keeps himself secret to those who don't want to know. It's not that they can't know. It's not that he's purposely. The system was designed that way, is that he stays hidden. But the minute you draw near to him, he begins to reveal himself who he is. Yeah, you draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. So he says, do your, when you preach to the needy or when you give to the needy, see, I give to the needy, Brenda gives to the needy, you all give to the needy every time you open your mouth, every time you sing, who are you giving to? The needy. I mean, when we sing and, we, and you listen to people pray, you know, I listen to uh, uh, Terry pray and uh, uh, Danielle pray, and sometimes it's Cassie, Brenda, you know, James. I mean, I hear different people praying and different people saying things. What, yeah, you're speaking to God, but you're also ministering to the needy because we're all needy here. We're all needy. And we know it. And you're ministering to the needy. See? And when we give to the needy, what do you think the reward is? It says, your father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Uh, 
A changed heart is what we're after. What? It said it rewards you openly with a changed heart. And with him living through us. That's the reward. The reward isn't being free from circumstances. The reward is him living through us so that circumstances no longer affect us. Yeah, that's the reward. That's the reward we're looking for. We're not looking for money. I mean, I'm not saying God doesn't do that. I'm not saying God doesn't financially bless you. But you know how he mostly financially blesses you? Changes your heart. Hmm? Yeah, sets you free from it. You're no longer looking for salvation through money. And now you're no longer spending it frivolously and giving it away to all of these other consuming businesses. See, that's the reward. He is our exceedingly great reward. His heart is our exceedingly great reward. That's what we're after. And we'll find that out here in just a minute. I mean, it's all in this this passage that I'm reading. It says, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. So again, what I'm not saying is, is don't, I'm not saying don't pray in our church because, well, well, I don't want to be standing in, uh, I might, might think I'm standing up here, you know, wanting to be seen of men. No. Most of what we pray, like I say, would not want to, is, it, it, um, does not want to be seen by carnal man. Let me put it that way. People who aren't spiritual. Okay. But I am saying be careful, you know, that when you're out in the community or anything, you know, and I I shouldn't, I think we're pretty good at this. I think we're getting better is that we will be, we're praying because we want God's heart for everybody. Just be careful. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done, here's that word again, in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Do you have that version? Can you read that? Um, Five through... You got the microphone? Do we have a microphone somewhere? Yeah. Thank you. Six, chapter 6, verse 5. Matthew. And when you come before God, don't turn that into a theatrical production either. All these people making a regular show out of their prayers, hoping for 15 minutes of fame. Do you think God sits in a box seat? <laughs> huh? What about the, huh, the next one? This, what, verse eight, 9 through? Verse 6. Oh, verse 6, yeah, yeah, go verse 6 and 7. <laughs> I don't know where 7 ends because it says 7 through 13. Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can mad- manage. The focus will shift from you to God, and you will begin to sense His grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best as above, so below. Keep us alive with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're a blazing beauty. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) Yeah, he does. That's, that's, that is... You know, that version, what you just read right there, reveals more about the American church than the version I'm reading. 
because it's so clear, you know. And uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of what you read there, and now I can't remember what it was. Um, it was before the before the uh, how Jesus taught them what prayer to pray. Can you read verse six and seven again? Or Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can, man can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can simply pray. You can pray very simply like this. Yeah, yeah. Something that too I was thinking of, even in in uh, you know speaking uh, for other people to hear. I wonder how many churches, and I'm not saying they all do this. Okay, please understand what I'm saying. But I wonder how many give you how many are saved in their church, or what miracles go on in their church because they're wanting their righteousness to be seen by others because they're trying to gain people in their in their ministry you know what i mean yeah you know exactly what i mean i mean just think how many people do that and they have their reward in other words what they're saying what this is saying is you won't get god's heart you'll get man's heart which is full of what Evil, wickedness, that's what you're going to get. See, it, the reward is a heart reward. You either get his heart or you get man's heart. Which one do you want? Okay, now I want to read the, the, this prayer that um, I, I think this is called the Lord's Prayer, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead, this is how my Bible says it, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So I want to start right back at the very beginning of it. It says, and of course we know what Bill Johnson taught, and I just loved it, was the fact that your will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. I see. Here's the problem with this prayer that people don't realize. This is a very popular prayer, isn't it? Yes. This is very. I mean, you even see this in some secular TV programs. They'll even quote this. That's how popular it is. Because there's a lot of word in here I don't see on TV programs, but this is one that I do. And what you have to realize is that when people pray this, they actually think they're praying for God to come down and do all of this. And even the way it's worded in in, in the in the the message that she just read, it, it sounds like that's what it's be, is being said. In other words, God, you know, our Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, God, you come down here and you bring your kingdom here on earth so that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah, we've just left out one little part of that, is that when you make that prayer, you're actually making a Gethsemane prayer. Gethsemane prayer. Remember what Jesus prayed in Gethsemane? We found two wills, didn't we? We found his will. See, my will is, and this was Jesus' will, God, you come down and do it. But God says, no, Jesus, I've called you to do it. And so when you make that prayer, when you say, our Father, and you hear that quoted all the time, what they're actually saying is, because this is what the prayer means is, you lay your will aside. And you do what the Father says to bring His will into the earth. It's not waiting for God to come and do it. You know, I think, Brenda, I think you even mentioned that. Somebody did, said, we're always waiting for God to come down and do stuff. And that's basically how it's preached. But when you read this, it says, your will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. How's His will going to be done on earth as it's done in heaven if He's in heaven? It's got to be through us. And so many people are sitting around saying, let this cup pass from me. I'm going to let, I'm going to let this cup pass from me. God, you come down and do it. Find another way. I don't want to do it. 
Jesus, and that's why it says to pick up your cross and follow him because he was the example because he laid aside his will to fulfill God's will. And now God has called the church to bring his will that's being done in heaven here onto the earth and it's supposed to be done through us. So we have to lay aside our will, that's the cross, to do his will. And even some of us have sometimes said, let this cup pass from me. Is there any other way, God, that you could do this? Did you have something? That's what Paul said, too, when he asked God three times to come and take that away from him. Yeah. And God said, no, my grace is sufficient for right. you. Right. That's what, yeah, Paul's a thorn in his flesh, the persecution, and, and what he was asking, what God was asking Paul to do. See, Paul, we, it's a great example, because that's, that's a human. I mean, so was Jesus, but I mean, we can separate, you know what I mean. He was the son of God and Paul wasn't. And so Paul is saying, let this, let this, let this cup pass from me. Yeah, yeah, change my story. You do, you find another way. And how many people, even in charismatic word of faith, Pentecostal churches, are waiting for God to drop down and fix stuff? And God has said, I've called you to do it. You're the one that's, that's going to be the vehicle to bring what I performed on the cross into the earth. We just sang a song, He must remain in heaven until all things are restored. Who do you think is going to restore that? Most of them are waiting for God to come down and restore it. The denominations are waiting for the rapture for Him to come down and, and restore it. I got news for you, He ain't coming until the church restores it. And there's going to be many times you're going to be in prayer, and that's why Jesus said, pick up your cross and follow me, or you got those who want to be my disciples who bear my cross. What is that representative? There's going to be times when we're trying to bring this in, then you're going to say, let this cup pass from me. And hopefully we'll say, nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And we'll stay in prayer until we get victory over it and come out and say, okay, I'm ready now to do your will. Yeah. So when you pray that prayer, you, you, you better know what you're praying. You better not think, oh, yeah, I'm going to pray this prayer so that God will come down and bring his will to the earth. No, you're praying it so that you can bring his will into the earth. Give us this day our daily bread. I think yours said three square meals a day. Okay, well, now, obviously, you know... You know, the carnal mind's going to look at that and say, yeah, I want, give me my food for the day, you know, my natural food. Well, th that's not talking about, it says, in other words, give me my daily bread so that I can bring your will from heaven into the earth. Right. That's what he's saying. And if you want to call it three square meals, that's fine with me. If you want to call it, give me breakfast, lunch, and dinner, God. But Jesus said, I am the true bread. Yeah. So when it says, give us our daily bread, who are you really asking for? Jesus. Which is a representation of who? The Father. So you're saying, give us this day our daily bread. Why? Oh, just so I can just have my daily bread. No, it's so that you can perform His will on the earth that's being done in heaven. Because it's going to take His daily bread to do that. It's going to take breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Three square meals. Yeah, and some snacks in between. So see, none of this really has, almost none of this has anything to do with God coming down and doing something. This has to do with you doing something. And forgive our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And you remember what I taught about forgive? There's another responsibility. Not just to forgive, but also you're given a vow that God, I'm going to take your daily bread. When you speak to me, I'm going to take your daily bread that's going to cause me to bring the will of God into the earth that's being done in heaven. And just for the, uh, the Internet's sake, the people that are watching by Internet, what's God's will in heaven? What's going on in heaven right now? Let's, let's discuss that for a little bit, okay? What's going on in heaven? Worship. 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 What else? Praise. 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 It's loud. Yeah, elders are falling on their faces, falling off their chairs. All, all, not just once, all the time. Holy, holy. Crying, holy, holy, holy. How much death is in heaven? None. How much sickness? None. How much pain? None. How much disease? None. How much financial problems? None. How much dysfunctional families? None. How much rebellion? Yeah, how much rebellion? Thank you. <laughs> what else? Come on, folks. 
I got you. Come on, Holy Spirit. Run through these people. Huh? No cry. Yeah, no tears. Thank you. Huh? No pride. Thank you. No crime. No crime. No regret. No regret. Good one. Good one. No selfish ambition. No politics. No. Woo! No politics. You mean it, there's no Republicans and Democrats up there? And independents and... No politics. Yeah, yeah, there's peace. Love. Joy. Perfect vision. What? Forgiveness. What? So, satisfaction. Dancing. That evil dancing. <laughs> yeah. See the Father face to face. There's faith in heaven. There's hope with capital H in heaven. <laughs> There's no devil up there. <clears throat> I mean, we're just covering what we see in the earth. We don't know what all's there that, that because of our limit, limitations here on the earth, we don't know the good stuff that's up there. I mean, what we listed we'd think would be great. But there's more. because, huh? Yeah, Paul saw things unspeakable. There's a lot more because... Uh, yeah, it's ever increasing. Yeah, his ever increasing government is up there. His ever increasing rule. It's here too. But it's there. Of the increase of his government, there'll be no end. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, we don't, yeah, yeah. So when you say give us our debt and forgive, forgive our debts and, and also forgive our debtors, why are you doing that? Because you want your daily bread so you can fulfill this will that God wants done on the earth that's being done in heaven. Because notice that's the first thing he started with. Then he gives us all the qualifiers. And then he says, and lead us not into temptation. Now that's how mine says it. And that's always bothered me, that scripture, because it makes it sound like God is, is trying to lead you into temptation. Well, we know that can't be right because James says that God doesn't tempt anybody. And we know the tempter is the devil. The scripture clearly says that. And so what this really means is, because and none of that, but notice what it says. It says, lead us. If God is leading you, how are you going to get in temptation? That's good. If you're being led by, where, you think God's going to lead you someplace to, into a, you know, a pornographic shop or something so that you can be tempted? If you're being led by God, you're not going to get tempted. And that's what he's saying. This is what this is saying is, lead us so we don't enter into temptation. Because if you're leading us, we won't enter. And some versions even say it that way. Is what? And she said, Jesus kept saying, follow me. Lead yeah, us. follow me. My sheep know my voice, and they go wherever I go. And Jesus is not going to lead you into temptation. And then it says, but deliver us from the evil one. And so we read that, and again, people say, yeah, deliver me from all these evil circumstances out here. Uh-uh. Yeah. It's deliver us from this evil one that lives in me, the church person, that is stopping your will that's up in heaven from being done on earth. This one said, keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Keep us our, from ourselves and the devil. Because you see, and so this whole prayer, what is this whole prayer saying? Is that, church, when I pray this, I'm praying, God, I want you to come down and I want you to do your will through me that's being done in heaven. And I'm going to fulfill these qualifiers so that that will take place. Deliver me from the evil one that's working in my heart that's stopping your will from being done. I mean, how many times, we, I'm sure, and listen, this is good news, but if we just look back in the past week, how many times has the evil one stopped what's being done in heaven from being done on earth just through us? 
I'm not trying to condemn anybody. I'm just saying that's why Jesus said to pray this prayer. Obviously, if he tells you to pray to be delivered from something, we obviously need to be delivered from something, right? There must be something in there, and God's not Xing us off because it's in us, or he wouldn't tell us, pray for deliverance. Why does he tell us to pray for deliverance? Because he wants us to fulfill what's being done in heaven to be done on earth. That's his, can I say it this way? His pride and joy is the church. He loves his church. We're to be a beautiful bride for him. What husband that's getting ready to get married does not love a beautiful bride? And that's what he's trying to make us, okay? All right. For if you give other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Of course, remember, when you forgive people's sins, they're giving you permission to speak into their life. And so God will also, there's another scripture that says, God, if you forgive others, you know, and speak into their lives, if they recognize what forgiveness is, then God will also speak to you. Why will he speak to you? What's he want to do? What, it, what have I been saying? What does he want to do here in the earth? He huh? wants to live through you. Why? What's he want to bring to the earth? What's being done in heaven? What? His kingdom. His kingdom. What's being done in heaven? And what's not being done in heaven? His perfect will. Boy, have we made God too small. Yes. Well, you guys just think, you, we're nothing without him. We can't do anything without him. But you've made him so small that he cannot create in you a people that can bring his will that's being done in heaven on the earth. You think he's too small. I don't think he's too small. I think his grace, his divine influence is powerful enough to change a people to bring his will into the earth. And I'm not talking just about healing. I love healing. But boy, I really want divine health. Yes. That's his will. Yes. That's the kingdom of God. That's where, that's where health is ruling over sickness. See, when health rules over sickness, there's no sickness. It's great when you get healed. That's just a demonstration of the promise there's something better. Yes. And church, I've called you to bring it into the earth. That's your blessing. That's the goodness of God. Is He empowers us, He calls us, and then He rewards us. <laughs> you know, you'd think if you did it on your own, He'd reward you. But it doesn't work that way. He empowers you, speaks to you, gives you the plan, gives you the purpose, gives you the calling, and then blesses you for it. Yeah, and gives you the, yeah, that's what I mean. He empowers you, gives you the empowerment to do. That's what grace is. Grace, it says grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and just paraphrase and yes to godliness. Well, if we taught, got taught perfectly, we'd always be saying yes to godliness and no to ungodliness. And then his will would be done. Here on earth as is done in heaven. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will, be, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Read that out of there. Got that was I can't remember, Kathy. You read that whole thing. What it was kind. Of, I just it was just funny. I just thought it was a. I'll do sixteen through eighteen okay. because it's all one. When you practice some appetite denying discipline to better concentrate on God, don't make a production out of it. It might mm. turn you into a small time celebrity, but it won't make you a saint. <laughs> If you go into training inwardly, act normal outwardly. Shampoo and comb your hair, brush your teeth, and wash your face. God doesn't require attention-getting devices. 
He won't overlook what you are doing. He'll reward you well. Yeah. I just thought, that, is this a real, uh, spoken in American language so Americans can understand it. To me, it's, it seems to be more clear. So anyway, that's all I have this morning. And, and uh, you know, is, is watch, you know, watch, watch our motivations. And many things we need to do in secret and not tell anybody. You know, we've got, we've got somebody here in church that has given to us every month faithfully for years. And they've never said a word. They've never said a word to anybody. You know, and that's what I mean. They do it in secret. They don't sound a horn or, or say what they give or anything like that. And, you know, they have, they are gonna, they're going to receive a reward from God. And so people need to understand, do some things in secret. We, look, if you don't hear what I'm not saying... I love the prayers that we pray in public here. Just be careful what you're praying. And if you want to pray a vow, I don't have a problem with that at all. But you be sure and fulfill it. Because we read the scripture. Your work of your hands will be destroyed if we don't. I want to read. I wasn't going to do this. What, you got something? Also, he cautions that if... If you make a vow to God, your spouse needs to be willing to say, yes, you mm. can do it as well. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes one will make a vow and the other one's like, ah, I didn't want you to do that. There needs to be yeah. an agreement. Yeah. You know, otherwise it'll get null and void. And so I just thought I needed to make that clear. Okay. Thank you. Do you have that version still on your phone? You to turn it off. Well, I, well, I didn't have you read the first part when I started in chapter six. Just start at the beginning of chapter six. That's what we did. Okay. It's actually titled, The World is Not a Stage. <laughs> be especially careful when you are trying to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but God who made you won't be applauding. <laughs> when you do something for someone else, don't call attention to yourself. <clears throat> You've seen them in action, I'm sure. Play actors, I call them. Treating prayer meeting and street corner alike as a stage acting compassionate as long as someone is watching, playing to the crowds. They get applause, true, but that's all they get. When you help someone out, don't think about how it looks. Just do it quietly and unobtrusively. That is the way your God, who conceived you in love, working behind the scenes, helps you out. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a good version when Kathy was reading it. I mean, it explains it easier for Americans to understand, you know what I mean? So I want to read this Psalm 15. <clears throat> okay, because I've read it so many times, but I, I just love it. It says, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The one whose walk is blameless and who, and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from their heart, whose tongue, see that what we're talking about this morning? whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken." All of these things I just read are your will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. <clears throat> you must have said this at one time, but I wrote on Psalm 15, these are our mighty exploits. Mm -hmm. 
when we talk about doing mighty exploits, yep. these are the mighty exploits. That's right. Those are the mighty exploits. And um, like I said, when we say give us our daily bread, you know, lead us so we don't enter into temptation, deliver us from the evil one, this is what we're praying for. Because this is God's will that's being done in heaven. See, when God makes a vow, He keeps it. Yes, that is so good. Yeah. Even He swears to His own hurt. Yeah. He keeps that vow. Anybody else? <clears throat> Okay. You're talking about like doing where it says, you know, we're doing all these things in secret and where God just said during praise and worship that Jesus is the secret that's right in front of our yep. face. Yeah, the mystery. And yeah. It's that it's the what we, it's been right in front of our face yep. this whole time. Mm-hmm. And it's we're doing this in secret in Jesus, exactly mm-hmm. how he would do it, how Jesus gave to the needy, how mm-hmm. Jesus would pray, how Jesus would fast. It's yeah. we're doing it in Jesus. Yeah, it's interesting how God always. I, I just, just amazing how He sets up all this stuff. You know, Bethel had a bunch of songs. Spirit, lead me. You know, all of those songs. You know, I don't know. Maybe it just seemed like there was a lot in there because that's what it was. That's what I was ministering on. But notice what I said. I said, lead us so that we don't get in attempt, so we don't get in temptation. And yet we have all these songs about leading us, you know. And then the mystery, you know, the being in secret and the mystery, you know, the things hidden, you know, huh? And that's what I mean. He, and he does it every week. That's his goodness. So you know he's not rejecting us. <laughs> so don't go home and think, oh, I didn't bring the kingdom in this one area this week. God hates me. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, he can't. Yeah. He doesn't have that in him. That's not in heaven, is it? Hatred's not in heaven. Yeah, or rejection. That's right. That's a good one. It's not in heaven. Accusation. Your will be done on earth. Huh? Deception. Your will be done on earth as it's done in heaven. That's what we get to do. And that's what we're working for. Okay? Amen. Father, we just thank you for your word this morning, God. Give us uh, grace to walk this thing out. And we know you have, but what did Bill Johnson say? We're praying. These are prayers of what? Devotion. We already know you've provided everything. Jesus finished it at the cross. But we pray prayers of devotion. You know, even when we say, God, we want to know you, we know that Jesus is the, is the, the qualifier, that, he, that him and the Father are one, but we say we want to know you because that's a prayer of devotion. We, want, we ask you that because, God, I don't think there's anybody here who knows the fullness of who you are. So that's why we ask, so that we can, we can continue to have you reveal to us who you really are. And we can look at Jesus' life, and that, that's absolutely 100% true. He is the express image of who you are. But God, you said it hasn't entered into the hearts of men the things that you've prepared for us. So obviously, they have to be revealed by you. And so, Father, we just thank you that, we, that to, to the extent that we know you, we thank you for that. Yes. But we're going to know you better. Yes. We're going to have to know you better in order to bring your will to the earth. Yes. What, in some areas we're doing it, in some areas we're not. The evil one is still, we haven't been delivered of him. But God, if we continue to pray to be delivered, you wouldn't have told us to pray something that wasn't possible. That means that we can be delivered from him. And so we just thank you, God, as we go from this place that we don't forget who we are. We won't forget our call. And we are looking forward to Wednesday night. (laughs) Brenda's teaching Wednesday night. So we're looking forward to that. And we'll see what you have for us and we will be ready to go we'll get we'll, 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 hope, we'll get something else to fulfill your will on earth that's being done in heaven and we just thank you in Jesus name amen <laughs>